most of the time they're going to enter a search term and they're going to look through the search results. There's only one space at the top for sponsored brands and a third of the way down, no one gets to the bottom of the page. All right, so we are talking about pay-per-click advertising, and I am excited to be joined by not one, but two special guests this week. We've got <laughs> Bob Langhorn and George Maressa from Clear Ads. My name is Kevin Sanderson. I am the VP of Marketing at my Amazon guy. Uh, so we'll get to some of the questions that are already starting to roll in. We have Serge asks, how do you determine the entire advertising budget? And how do you allocate this budget to all the variety of advertising campaigns? How much do you spend and where do you spend? Have an understanding of how many units you realistically want to shift. Work out your click-through rate and conversion rate. Work out what the average CPC or suggested bid or your average bid for those keywords is. And you can work it out backwards. So you'll know how many units you realistically want to ship. In terms of how you allocate that to the full suite of advertising campaigns that Amazon offers you, the best way to do that is segment sponsor product, sponsor brand, and sponsor display. I would say that the majority of your searches and sales are going to come through sponsored product campaigns. Think about how the customer is going to navigate. Most of the time, they're going to enter a search term and they're going to look through the search results. There's only one space at the top for sponsor brands and a third of the way down no one gets to the bottom of the page. But even within search, you're going to have to be careful as to how much of that goes through an auto campaign and a manual campaign. You're going to get a far better quality of search coming through the manual campaigns because you'll have control over those keywords. It's very easy to spend a lot of money on an auto campaign. Amazon loves auto campaigns because you haven't told it what to spend. <laughs> so even within sponsor products, I would try and make sure that if possible, 80% of your budget in the long term goes through keywords and 20 goes through auto. Yeah, can I just also add, follow the profit with the ASINs. One, try and probably categorize your campaign so you're able to see, okay, where has majority of my budget gone and where have I generated most of my sales or most of my profit on an account level, not on just on a PPC level. Because you might find that there might be some low hanging fruits with certain ASINs that haven't reached their potential because you might have an account level budget in place, right? So some of the bigger, more demanding ASINs are taking more of the budget. So this is why it's really crucial that you need to make sure that you have the different ASINs in different campaigns and it's segmented so you can actually very quickly see where your budget is being distributed in terms of spend. You're also going to get really good indications with budget limitations from Amazon. They're going to tell you which campaigns have reached limits. Uh, what is the average range I should expect to spend a PPC campaign at $50 a day budget on a very high competitive subcategory? where bids are about $1.50, should I stay away? I'm going to be brutally honest. I'm going to say, yes, stay away. If you've already identified that it's a very highly competitive subcategory, $50 a day is not going to get you very far, $1.50 a click. You have to understand why that category is going to be competitive. Have a look at the brands that are in that category, and that $50 a day isn't going to get you very far. It's a good starting point. I don't always even start my campaigns at $50 a day, but I know I've got multiple campaigns being set up for that launch. Is this the only campaign you're going to be running at $50 a day? You're going to have multiple campaigns and then you need to divide that $50 by the auto, the broad, the phrase, the exact, the PAT targeting, the sponsored brand, for example. And that's really going to limit the, the amount of exposure and clicks you're, you're going to get. One approach that you could take if you were completely limited to $50 a day is you want to look at those keywords that are not the most high in demand. So if there's some terms that very long tail but very relevant, then having some exact match campaigns to those ASINs might help as well. Because ultimately at the very beginning as well, you're trying to teach Amazon what is relevant for that particular ASIN. You start more laser focused and then yeah. kind of work your way up. Don't worry about what is the main keyword that has the most search volume. What is going to get you the most sales? Amazon doesn't know what your product is when you're launching it, regardless of how good your listing is and what category you put it in. To them, it's just a load of numbers. Like, you know what your product is. If you've got a restricted budget, avoid the auto campaign. Avoid the broad campaigns. Avoid those best keywords that have the highest search volume, like find the keywords that are hyper relevant to your product. As you start to get reviews in, then you have a lot more wiggle room to start getting broader and broader and broader with the keywords and targeting that you introduce into the account. Amit asks, I'm running out of stock. Would you recommend pausing all PPC? Ooh, 
Um, first of all, I'd say don't run out of stock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rule number one, as Stephen always says. Some people say increase the price of your product because then you'll slow down the sales velocity of that product, hopefully meaning that you've still got some stock that you can remain in the rankings. You've not gone out of budget where Amazon can potentially penalize you for that. I don't know if I'm a fan of that because you could completely change your rankings and your standings with the algorithm by changing that price so drastically, especially as you're increasing the price. You just don't align with the rest of the category, especially for the quality of your product mm -hmm. and where you used to stand. So I would probably lean more towards doing something with PPC. I don't know if you need to completely pause it. I actually have an account recently where they went out of stock on pretty much everything after telling me that they had all their stock. They still had enough to potentially trickle through until they had to ride out those six weeks. Left an auto campaign going so there was still some level of discoverability and our top performing keywords still going in exact match. So people could still find them through the auto campaigns, etc. So they still had a presence. Amazon can still see when the algorithm still wanted to be there and we hadn't just pulled back. And it depends how long you're going to be out of stock. Like the last thing you want to do is be out of stock for like longer than two weeks. Otherwise, you're really going to have a negative effect on your ranking. I would try and make sure that you don't go out of stock any longer than 14 days if possible. I encourage you to get some sort of stock management tool or inventory management tool. There's there's plenty out there like so stock and keep an eye on sounds weird but keep an eye on world news because things mm. change like there are wars going on there are restrictions in travel and things like that i would encourage you to get that sort of tool to even avoid having to i guess ask this question and deal with those consequences thank you everybody thank you it's been a pleasure it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for having us kevin and thank you for everyone for your question if you like this video check out these videos right here next